Good morning. We are to start our morning worship service and I ask for those who are still standing up to please settle down. Prayer. <clears throat> Prayer is a characteristic that defines a Christian, one who believes in Jesus Christ. And this act draws attention, whether it's done on peacetime, when there's nothing happening, or when it's done during unfortunate events, like in emergencies. It makes people curious, curious to this one who prays. And oftentimes, they ask a question, whether directly or in their minds. Why pray? Well, Christians pray because it's a command for them. Philippians 4 verse 6, it says, Present your request to God. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. And Christians pray and they receive an answer. God answers their prayers. 1 John chapter 3, verse 22, And whatever we ask, we receive from Him because we keep His commandments and do the things that are pleasing in His sight. The answer to a believer's prayers brings, also brings assurance of salvation. It is what defines a Christian an answer to his prayer. And it is a reli reliable way to know if you are a Christian, a true believer of Christ, that God answers your prayers. And that is also because a Christian keeps God's commandments and prays according to His will. 1 John chapter 5 Verse 13 to 15. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence which we have before Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests which we have asked from him. Also, Christians pray because of an assurance of the Father's love. In the first verse of 1 John chapter 3 reads, See how great love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and in fact, we are. It is this great love that in John 3.16, Jesus said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. Brethren, as we come before our Lord this morning to prepare us to hear His word, let us be reminded of our place before Him, of who we were when we were yet sinners and who we are now. In Christ Jesus, the Lord hears our prayers as we do His will. And this is the grace and blessing and the love for us believers. Let us pray. Oh God, what a wondrous thought indeed, O oh Lord, to know that you answer our prayers. You hear us, Lord. And this is a promise that if we ask Anything according to you, will you hear us? You hear us, Lord. And that is a great assurance, O oh Father, to know that you answer our prayers. And we pray, Lord, that you continue to guide us. You continue to mold us, to align our lives according to your will. So that, O oh God, whatever indeed, we ask of you, you answer. And we thank you, Lord, for your great love 
this love of yours, Lord, Father, that also placed us in this place to seek your will, to know more about you, to love our brethren in return, to love according to how you love us. And may this thought bring us, oh God, to our knees, that we seek you, we seek you earnestly, O oh Lord. For we are indeed recipients of grace and recipient of your abounding love. Let us all stand. Let's praise our song, our Lord, with these songs. Spirit, how can I escape your love? Your love for me is deeper than the sea and higher than the heavens above. Where can I flee from your presence now that you abide in my heart? My heart is your throne, your temple, your throne. So what could ever give us a Your love is higher than the heavens. Your love is deeper than the ocean. Nothing in creation can take me away from your love. Your love, there is nothing greater. Your love, there is nothing stronger. You came to me, gave your life, so I could be free. Who can explain your mercy? Who can comprehend your way? Show me your grace by taking my place and washing all my sorrow away. I just want to live in your presence, worship you with all of my heart. You show me the way, draw me closer each day. Don't let anything keep us apart. that neither death nor life can separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing in the present and nothing in God can take me away from your infinite love. Your love is higher than the heavens. Your love is deeper than the can take me away from your love. Nothing can take me away. Your love, there is nothing greater. Your love, there is nothing stronger. You came to me, gave your life, so I could be free. I can be free. Your love. The Lord is my strength and shield. 
my hope in joy and in sorrow with the spirit i am sealed from now to the day when christ jesus returns and his glory is revealed the lord is my strength and song my heart trusts in him and rejoices his mercy is like the dawn it's as new as the morning yet reaching beyond the lord is my strength and my song creator redeemer the ancient of days forever more worthy of praise of praise the lord is my strength and shield my hope in joy and in sorrow with his spirit i am still from now to the day when christ jesus returns and his glory is revealed the lord is my strength and song my heart trusts in him and rejoices his mercy is like the dawn it's as new as the morning yet reaching me and the lord is my strength and my song the lord is my strength and my song beloved Let's love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, because God is love. May this the love of God was revealed in us, that God has sent His only Son into the world, so that we may live through Him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation of our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God remains in us and His love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we remain in Him and He in us because He has given to us of His Spirit. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him, and he in God. We have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love, and the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. By this, love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because as he is we also are in this world there is no fear in love but perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment and the one who fears is not perfected in love we love because he first loved us if someone f says i love god and yet he hates his brother or sister he is a liar for the one who does not love his brother and sister whom he has seen, or cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God must also love his brother and sister. Oh, thank you, O oh God. Thank you indeed, Lord, for your great love towards us, O oh Lord. And this is the great love, O oh God, that we now belong to you because of all these things you have done for us. And we thank you, O oh Lord. We we can't be thankful enough, O oh God, but we do. We pray and we thank you. And as we sing this next song, Lord, this is our confidence in you, O oh God. We have been redeemed and we belong to you and no one can take that away. And we praise you. I 
was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The bridge was far too wide. But from far back of the castle, you held me in your side. So you made a way across the great divide, left behind a hand's throat to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owed, broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time I Jesus, for your great love towards us, for your sacrifice that we, before our for death, now we live through Christ our Lord. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, okay. So before we go to our time of prayer, we'd just like to ask all the children to please stand up right now. 
And I'd like to ask the congregation to join me as we pray for these kids. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful to you for once again bringing these children to our church. Indeed, what a privilege you have given them to be able to hear your word, know your will, and see the path of life in Christ Jesus. And we ask, Lord God, that you would prepare their hearts right now, their minds, and that you will grant them specific attention, Lord God, as they listen, as they sit, as they discuss, as they go to their classes, Lord God. May their hearts prove to be fertile ground for the planting of your word. And may you indeed be magnified before the very eyes of these young children. Lord, we commit them into your hands and we pray that you will move in a mighty way in the midst of each classes, Lord. And we even lift up to you all the teachers, grant them strength, wisdom, and power as they declare your great and mighty works. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you, children, as you go to your classes. At this point, as we usually do, we would like to know if there is within our midst uh, who have attended Higher Rock for the first time. So, meron po ba ito yung unang pagkakataon nyo to attend Higher Rock? May we ask you to please stand up wherever you are. Meron po ba? Okay, thank you very much. Welcome to Higher Rock. Baha po mayroon pa ho. Okay, uh, can we ask you to please uh, follow Brother Dean, the gentleman waving his hand for a very short orientation. Your seat will be reserved so that when you come back, it will still be um, empty for you. Now, for our time of prayer, we would like, I would like you to please turn with me to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17 to 18. It reads, Therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. The verses we have read are the last two verses of the Apostle Peter's second letter. Hence, we could very well regard this as Peter's last words. And it bears a message regarding two things. First, it is a message of warning. And second, it is a message of exhortation to grow. Looking at the background of this letter, we will note that this letter was written by the apostle to many believers or Christians who may have been experiencing persecution and or suffering at that time. That is why he introduces his first letter in 1 Peter 1, verse 1 and 2. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who reside as aliens scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with His blood. May grace and peace be yours in the fullest measure. 
Though he did not particularly identify all the reasons why they were scattered or residing as foreigners in different places, yet we will see that the first letter's purpose was to comfort them in their trials and to encourage them to bear these trials with a, with a Christian spirit, <clears throat> imitating the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, the second letter from where we get our text was written with the view of the fact that they were teachers of error among them and the tendency of whose doctrine was to turn away from the gospel. And the New Testament is clear that the enemy deceitfully in infiltrates the church with false teachers who sound biblical, but deceptively lead God's people away from the truth into destructive heresies. Peter has spent chapter 2 and a good part of chapter 3 warning about this man. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 and 3 reads, But false prophets who arose among the people just as there will also be false prophets among you who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their sensuality, and because of them, the way of the truth will be maligned. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words, and their judgment from a, a long ago is not idle. And destruction is not asleep. And in verse in and in chapter 3, verse 16, he refers to them as the untaught and unstable, who distorted the scriptures to their own destructions. Without a doubt, these two elements of trials, testings, and false teachers will be present to test our resolve in our faith in this life. Hence, the last word of the Apostle Peter is to be on guard so that we will not fall from our steadfastness but to grow in grace. He says, in the first word, he says, be on guard. And it is a military term that denotes the activity or office of a watchman whose job was to protect those who are asleep from harm during the night and prevent loss or theft. The soldier on watch was accountable with his own life to protect that which was entrusted to his care. It was also the same command that the Apostle Paul gave to the Ephesian elders in Acts 20 verse 28 to 30. Be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flocks. And from among your own selves, men will arise, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after them. Thus, to be on guard, fulasso in the Greek is not only a notice against dangers from without, but an admonition to watchfulness from within. And the reason for this guarding is simple, so that we will not fall from our steadfastness, from the stability of our mind and our faith and from the firm commitment to God's revealed truth. However, Peter's admonition also gives a contrast. Not only are we to prevent falling, but we must also grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, growth is a natural progress of a person who possesses life. Kapag kung tayo po ay buhay, Natural po na dapat tayo lumalago o lumalaki. And we, who claims to be true believers, who has received eternal life, then should, should grow. And it should not be an option, but rather a necessity. 
because it is a byproduct of our new life in Christ Jesus. Therefore, simply put, Peter's point in the last verse of his letter is that we must watch ourselves and the people around us lest we become unstable and not grow, which is the natural process of a true Christian. With the pandemic still not over and the recent rise of COVID-19 infections, together, together with other diseases like dengue and cancer and many other things, many so-called or self-proclaimed experts and even spiritual advisors can use this situation to once again unsettle our minds and sow fear in our hearts, stunting our progress in our Christian lives. But as the Apostle Peter warns, knowing this beforehand, we should not at once again be carried away and fall from our steadfastness. Instead, we should continue to grow in faith and in godliness. For this morning, let us pray for our leaders of the church as, this fa as they face these new challenges that the pandemic might bring. We don't know what kind of landscape it will create in the next few days or weeks or months. Let us pray that their eyes would continue to behold Christ and his word, and constantly be given wisdom and courage to stand for what is pleasing and right before the Lord. Let us also pray for our brethren who were infected with COVID, and even those who got sick with other diseases that is present in our society or in our environment. Let us pray that they will not weaken in faith by their situation, but that they will remain steadfast, fixing their eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Lastly, let us pray for ourselves as a church and as professing believers who have received eternal life in Christ Jesus, that God may not allow and that we also will not allow any hindrance in knowing Christ, but may we be faithful in our own spiritual disciplines, in our commitment to our one true Savior, Lord and Master, the Captain of our ship, Jesus Christ. Please join me as we come in prayer. Indeed, Lord, we come to you, our sovereign God, most powerful, gracious, and merciful. We know that our future does not depend on our hands, but in you. And we know that more than anyone else, our security is found in Jesus Christ. And so we come now to you in prayer in humility and in faith. Lifting up to you our leaders of the church, Pastor Bob and the whole steering committee, as well as all the workers, the cell servants. Lord, we do know that though the future may be uncertain to our minds, for we do not know what lies ahead, but we also know that it is certain and sure because of the life that we have in Christ Jesus. We know that victory lies ahead and we know that you will reign supreme over all things. And so we pray, Father God, that you would allow our leaders to continuously be strong and courageous in the midst of the many challenges that might come in their path. We pray that in the same manner that you have guided us the past two years 
Father, we pray that you would continue to allow us to be able to look to you constantly, to behold Christ and his word supreme, and to be given much wisdom so that we will be guided in whatever step or whatever decisions we will make as your under-shepherds of this church. We pray for your filling of the Holy Spirit so that we might be able to, to discern your will at all times. Even in minor things, Lord God, we pray that we would see your hand guiding us, leading us, so that we might be able to do and accomplish your purposes for which you have called us as a church and as your people. Oh God, we pray, Father God, that you will also protect us, Lord God, from any harm as well from any health concerns, Lord Jesus. And so we lift up to you the leadership and we ask, Lord God, that you would indeed allow us to follow your way always. And Lord, we also come to you in behalf of our brethren and even some relatives who may have been infected with the virus and even for brothers and sisters in Christ who were got sick because of other diseases. Lord, we remember them now and we lift them up, each one of them, asking your Holy Spirit to strengthen them and to allow them to look to you, fixing their eyes on Christ, the great healer and the great Sal Savior and Lord. We pray, Father God, for their healing. For we know, Lord God, that nothing is impossible to you and that you are the great healer. As you have shown that when you came the first time here on earth, you have healed all diseases, Lord. And we pray that you will allow their physical body to recover as well as to strengthen and nourish their spiritual life so that they would continue to be steadfast and strong in the faith. Help them, Father, to put their confidence and trust in you alone. And may you use all the medical personnel so that they might be ministered unto by whatever physical needs or procedures they might need. We also pray, Father God, that you will also use the church and other members to be an encouragement to them, to help them bear the burden, bear the trial or the testing that they are going through. Third, Lord, we also pray for our church and for ourselves as a people who say we are your followers, we are your children. Indeed, what a privilege and what a blessing to receive eternal life in Christ Jesus. But we know, Father God, that as we live this life in this earth, there are a lot of obstacles as well as hindrances in knowing you. There would be false teachers or even professors who would try to lead us the wrong path. There would be some situations that would also allow us or make us fearful. But we pray, O oh God, that you will help each one of us to look also to Jesus Christ. Help us as well that we might be faithful in our own spiritual disciplines. Help us also to look above the tides and to look 
above to the things of Christ and not on the things of this earth. Help us to be steadfast as well in our commitment to our one true Savior and Lord. Help us to be obedient children whose desire is nothing more but to please and to glorify our God in our life. O oh God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will also fill us and indeed be a light and a salt on this earth where you, wherever you have placed us. Thank you, Lord God, for we have a God to whom we can entrust ourselves, to whom we can come and lay our concerns at all times. Lord, we pray for the rest of our time as we continue in worship this morning. May you truly and only be magnified and glorified in our midst. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
we go, Lord? Where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Where else can we go, Lord? Where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Where else can we go, Lord? Where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Where else can we go, Lord? Where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Show us Christ. Father, on this bright and beautiful Sunday morning, we, your people, seek words of eternal life. And we come to you, dear Father, knowing that you will not disappoint us. You will allow us to see Christ Jesus, our Savior, through your word. And so we ask, dear God, that you might once again allow your spirit to move in our midst to allow our hearts also, Lord, to be fertile for the planting of your word. We commit to you, each one, and we, even our brethren out there, we trust, dear God, that your grace will be upon them, even as we worship, even as they seek you too. We commit to you, Lord, each one in this place, be glorified in our midst. Allow us, Father, to be edified once again. We give you back all the glory in Christ's name. <clears throat> Good morning. As Brother Lito has already explained to you, and as you also know, uh, the cases, COVID cases in our nation is once again on an upsurge. But we are thankful that in spite of this, um, the churches have been allowed to open, to continue to meet, and that is most certainly a privilege. We are also grateful that the numbers, in spite of the increase in the numbers in our country and the positivity rate, hospital utilization is not uh, getting out of hand. It's still under control. We are also grateful because even in our own congregation, uh, while a few have tested positive for COVID, Thankfully, they are not uh, serious. Uh, mostly are just exp experiencing flu-like symptoms and are basically, uh, as far as I was told, on the men. Uh, we are also grateful because there are brethren who were exposed to somebody who might have tested positive and yet they, are res they were responsible enough to advise us so they could not join us uh, today. So we are grateful for all of this because uh, these are, this, is, this is a way to protect the congregation too. Uh, and uh, certainly that also manifests the love of our brethren who need to stay away uh, just so that they will not infect anyone else. There were also those who might have been exposed to others and they really wanted to be in the church. So they took antigen tests, RT-PCR tests, 
so that they can finally be settled about their situation and uh, come to church if, prove, if it proves negative. So we thank the Lord for this, and we even thank the Lord for all of you being here. But certainly we advise that you be responsible, keep your mask at all times, and, and try, not to, try not to cough into somebody's face uh, for the meantime. No, I'm just kidding, of course. I know you don't do that. We, I had asked uh, Brother Quito Espirito to speak Sana here this, to us, but he was exposed to somebody who's positive and within his own family. So uh, continue to pray for him and his family, although he, he himself is fine. But again, protocol dictates that uh, somebody is exposed to somebody positive might have to stay away first uh, from the congregation. So uh, at almost at the last minute, we had to make a decision as to who will preach. Uh, I was actually preparing already until somebody said maybe Brother Jairus can, have, can minister to us since he is uh, continually ministering in Marcelo. So we thank the Lord for his availability. Do pray also for the Bond Servants of Love congregation over in uh, Paranaque because he informed me last night that three of their members also tested positive. So it's really on the rise and we pray that you will continually exercise caution. Still, we are grateful because the Lord has allowed him to be here. So please open your hearts for the teaching of God's word through his servant, Brother Jairus Sasanjun. Good morning. Good morning. It is indeed a blessing to be called right at the end of the minute last night. <laughs> but it is indeed a blessing to be back here to share the word of God. Uh, today, we will be studying about the sin of idleness. Okay? But before we start, maybe can you recall someone in your life that you can say that God used to encourage you to be diligent? Siguro, maybe you can think about it. Na naging masipag kayo, nakita niya yung importance of hard work. Beside my parents, who are diligent in work, I can say that someone in my childhood encouraged me to work and to work hard. There is this person who sells soya bean curd or taho. Okay. I can still picture his face and going back, he was selling taho in the morning and selling balut in the evening. Napakasipag po niya, actually. Almost every day we would buy taho to him. And years passed by when I was a bit older, I saw him again and asked how he was. Actually, kasama ko yata yung brother ko at that time. Proudly saying that he was able to finish three children, his three, three children in college. So that time, sabi ko, wow, grabe, no? Napagtapos niya yung kanyang tatlong anak. And I was really happy for him. And at that time, I was motivated in some way to work harder. Na maging masipag ka. Kapag naging masipag ka, the Lord will also in some way work well. People like that, for me, are encouragements. I know na kayo din, marami, and I have seen a lot of people also in the Christian community who worked hard and naging encouragement din para sa akin. Especially for me as a pastor, uh, I have seen my co-pastor who worked diligently, study well. Uh, naging encouragement din yun para sa akin to study more about the work, uh, about the Word of God. Work is essential for us. It is a call for us to do, and to do it well for the glory of God. But even Christians struggle when it comes to work, like the believers in Thessalonica. The church in Thessalonica actually is a good church and a model church for Paul. Though we, they have these two recurring problems that Paul will address in his second letter. Their first concern was their concern about the return of the Lord. Akala nila dumating na ang Panginoon. Okay? The second problem that they have is the sin of idleness, which Paul will address in our passage. This problem is recurring because Paul already addressed this issue in his first letter to them. And now in his second letter, Paul, as we can see, will give details on how they are to confront a sinning brother who is idle. But the problem is, why is this sin ongoing? Kung na-address na ito ni Paul, nasabi na ni Paul ito, nasulat niya na sa first uh, Thessalonians, bakit pa rin until the second letter, andun pa rin po ito? First, because of their eschatological expectation. 
they know that Jesus is coming back, so they assume that they don't have to work anymore. But Paul already addressed that issue of Christ's return, thinking that, that it should have been addressed. Second, it is, uh, is what they call apostolic privilege because of the support that they are receiving. But that is not enough reason for them not to work at all, kahit na meron apostolic privilege. The third reason, because of the rich patrons who are helping them. May mga mayayamang tao na nagsusupport sa mga may mahihirap sa bahagi ng church nila. That's why Paul reminded them, actually in, in, in his first letter, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11 to 12, and to aspire to live quietly and to mind your own affairs and to work with your hands as we instructed you, so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. So na-address ito ni Paul before. Uh, they are, that they are to live not dependent on anyone. Whatever the reason may be, they are to work as Paul commanded, as it is written in the Word of God. As we are to look at it, medyo in some way parang matigas yung ulo. Nung mga, actually, konti lamang po daw sila uh, sa church na ganito, but still hard-headed po yung iba. That is why Paul would give a lengthy instruction, a rebuke, and a correction with this sin that some of them are still holding on. So let us read our passage in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 6 to 15. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 6 to 15. Now we command you brothers in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. For you yourselves know how to ought to imitate us because we were not idle when we were with you when we were with you. Nor did we eat anyone's bread without praying for it. But with toil and labor, we work night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have that right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now such persons, are command, we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. If anyone does not obey what we say in this letter, take note of that person and have nothing to do with him that he may be ashamed. Do not regard him as an enemy, but warm him as a brother. So, hatiin lamang po natin ang ating pag-aaral natin ngayong, ngayong umagang ito in six parts. The command to keep away in verse 6. The example of Paul in verses 7 to 9. The warning given in verses 10 to 11. The encouragement in verses 12 to 13. And the punishment in verses 14 to 15. And at the end, I will give an, ex uh, an application of the importance of Work. So let us start with verse 6, the command. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. So what is the call here? What is the command given here by Paul? Ano yung gagawin ng mga taong namumuhay ng unruly life or idle? That you are to keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness. The command here is to keep away. You keep away. But hold on to Paul's command as we try to understand his reason first. Because there are various translations given with this word. In, in Greek, ataktos. Okay? The word uh, in Greek, ataktos, means keep away from any brother who is unruly. Okay? A brother who lives or behaves in Nashby, an unruly life. Okay, or in Greek means disorder or in defiance of good order or disorderly. So they are living disorderly. In Lunida, a Greek lexicon defines it this way, pertaining to refusing to work idle or lazy. Both definitions shows us defiances on what to do that should be in line in good order. So may tamang pamumuhay, ito'y hindi nila ginagawa, so ito ay... Unruly po sila. Then Paul adds, and not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. 
they are not living in line with the tradition. And what tradition is this? This tradition is related to the apostolic teaching about labor and is rooted in Genesis chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. It reads there in Genesis 3, 17 to 19, And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. In short, you are to work, work hard in order for you to eat. You have to labor, and it may be hard, wala pong trabaho actually na madali, but it is part of life, for it is part of what God has planned for us. Paul then is saying and reminding the believers at Thessalonica that if you are not working, you are going against the apostolic tradition. And be reminded that this tradition that Paul is telling us here is rooted in the Word of God. Meron po itong pinanggagalingan. It's not, this is not just a suggestion. Ay, magtrabaho ka. This is not something na preference lamang ni Paul that you have to work, but this is in line with what God has defined work to be. You are going against what God has commanded and what God has ordered us to do. So if you are living a life of idleness, kung ikaw ay tatamad-tamad, you are sinning against God. In defiance against God. It destroys your testimony and it brings shame in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it does not bring glory to God. So if you are a Christian who is in this position right now, idle, lazy, unruly, disorderly, you will, and you will continue to live a life actually that defies what God has ordered. I have seen people live this way. Okay? They profess to be Christians. But still, they would deny that what they're doing is not sin. Parang okay lang nun. Eh, wala. Wala talaga akong mahanap na trabaho eh. Actually, hindi naman talaga siya naghahanap ng work. Some wives have already accepted that sin and would not even remind their husbands that, they are, that what they're doing is sin. The sad part is, dahil na-experience ko po ito, part po ito ng counseling ko before, not only that they are not working, but at the same time, they're not even helping in their household chores. Sobrang katamara na po talaga yun. So we have now defined the person and the sin of idleness. Who is this person? He is unruly, disobedient, rebellious, a lazy person who do not follow tradition, who does not follow the word of God. What are we to do? Paul said to the church of Thessalonica in ESV, keep away, or in NASB, keep away. In New King James, withdraw from this person. Or in other translations, stay away. In the Greek lexicon, bidag, it, it is defined this way, to keep one's distance, keep away, or stand aloof. Purposely to avoid association with someone, to shun, to avoid, to keep away from, and to have nothing to do with. So parang dapat wala tayong in some way na lalayo tayo. Pero mamaya, I'll be explaining on how we are to apply that word, keep away. Does this mean that when we see this person in church, I will not talk to him or be near him? Para siyang may COVID. Lalayuan mo siya. Ano, nandito na ito, nandito nagkatrabaho. Eh, hindi naman po ganun. Ano? Siyempre, hindi po tama yun. Of course not. Because... This is a sin issue we are to apply still Matthew 18. Siyempre, and church po ang mag apply neto at siyempre na-address po ito ng church. Which I also did in BSL before. So what is Matthew 18? If your brother sin against you, go tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even uh, to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. So step one is to confront the sinning believer privately. You have to talk to this person. Siyempre, normally, ang gumagawa po neto ay self-servant. 
Siyempre, alam niya yung life, hindi pa rin siya nag-work. Okay? Then you are to confront him. Even if you are a believer, siguro kung kapatiran niya sa church, maybe you can ask that person, Brother, you have to work. Para matagal na rin yata ito. And I encourage you and uh, I, I may be able to help you to find work. So try to encourage that person to, to work. Step two is to confront him again with two or other three witnesses present. So kung hindi siya nakikinig pa rin sa'yo, ang family nakikita mo, apektado na, nahihirapan na yung asawang babae, that this man, this husband, still not working, nahihirapan yung kanyang family, then sometimes nakadependent na sa iba, then you are to remind him that this this sin. Hindi po yung ginawa ko before. I met again with this person. Actually, ang dami kong conversation with him. Pag nakaka, nakakasabay ko lang siya, nakikita ko siya, I would always encourage him. And I will uh, do it and deal with it privately and then until the time that kailangan na siyang kausapin ng leadership. Step three is to tell the offense to the congregation and cut the offender off from the normal life of the church. So we tell it to the church and apply the di- disciplinary action. In step four, ito na yung pinaka matinde. For those who persist in sinning after the first three steps, we are to remove them from the fellowship to Together. So, ito na yung tinatawag na excommunication. So, how are we to apply Paul's command, keep away? Okay, we are to go back to step three. Cut off offender, uh, cut the offender off from the normal life of the church. As a member, he cannot serve. So, yun yung unang-unang bagay. So, before this person was serving in our church. So, cut off yun. Hindi siya pwedeng mag-serve. So, unti-unti po ito. Yung, pro- yung process po na ito. Then, he cannot take part of the communion. Di ba? We take time of silence, acknowledge the, the blessing of, that we have received in Jesus Christ's salvation. Siyempre, mag ka sa ating Panginoon. Uh, you will repent of your sin. And then, siyempre, awkward na tamang may sin ka, then you will take, say to the Lord, thank you for the forgiveness of sin. And then, you're continuing in sin. So, kailangan makat off ka sa communion. Okay? He cannot be part of the fellowship also. Normally, we would not invite him, especially kapag may mga birthday. We apply that actually, kapag may mga ka- kainan, kakain, makikikain ka sa amin. Siyempre, isipin nyo ngayon, parang Brother Jay, ang, ang higpit mo naman pala. Buti na lang hindi kami sa BSL. But we are applying to keep away. Hindi pa pwede na tamang, you're joining us in fellowship, having fun with us, and then your family is suffering. Why not do that? Wala ka maipakain sa anak mo. Y- yung tuition pi ng anak niya, pinapangutang na nila. Actually, ako na yung nag-offer before sa kanila, maybe we can help. Kasi naawa kami dun sa, sa asawang babae. So, cut off talaga sa kanya. Until the time, syempre, part of that, uh, syempre, I would call them, uh, called his attention, uh, constant reminder for him to repent. Okay? Pero syempre, he must attend church, requirement yun, you must attend the Bible study na ating ginagawa. And this is what we did. And at the same time, there is a continuous reminder of his sin and to repent of it and for him to look for a job. Actually, ang dami naming tumulong sa kanya. I even gave him, kasi sabi ko, baka pwede kang mag-taxi driver. Uh, dahil yun yung pinakamadali kasi marunong siya mag Wala akong lisensya eh. So, binigyan ko siya ng pera na pang lisensya. Sabi ko, ito, hindi naman mahal ang pag-apply for a license. So, binigyan ko. Actually, ginastos lang niya yung binigay ko. Hindi ko naman maisingil sa asawa dahil nakakaawa naman singilin pa siya regarding do sa, pang, sa driver's license niya. So, patuloy po yung help namin sa kanya. So, if he plans to apply, I reminded him that we are here to help him and to pray for him. And my conversation with him is straight, meaning we don't talk about other things, but his need to repent and for him to find a job. So, hindi kami nag-uusap about basketball. We don't talk about manly talk, na tamang, oh, parang okay-okay lang tayo dito. No, you have to see that you are not working and that you are sinning against God. Kailangan mo munang makita ang iyong kasalanan at kailangan mo magtrabaho. The sad part is, when I was about to tell him that he cannot participate in the communion service, dahil actually kinausap ko muna yung wife niya, siyempre parang nabalita na kagad, kakausapin ko na siya at that time, as I was commanded actually by Pastor Bob, na hindi na siya pwedeng mag-communion service with us, hindi na siya bumalik 
ng church ever since. Until now, hindi na talaga siya bumalik sa church. But yung wife niya continues pa rin uh, in attendance. So there is a proper way to apply Paul's command to keep away. That is in line with scripture. Hindi po ito parang harsh. Okay? Loving po yung ginagawa namin because we are asking him to see his sin. Yun yung pinaka-main point eh. Kailangan mo makasa- makita ang iyong kasalanan because this is against God. And I don't want anyone in our church to continue to live in sin. Diba? So if someone is confronting you of any sin here in the church, it is love. Because we don't want anyone to continue to have a bad relationship or a severed relationship with the Lord. Hindi po maganda yun eh. That will be for your disadvantage. Sometimes we may look harsh, but that is love. Also, the usual question I would receive with regards to this, if, paano brother Jay, kung ang anak ko o yung daughter ko, actually natanong sa akin to before, siya yung lazy. Eh, anak mo, tamad, hindi nag-work, graduate na, 35 years old na, nasa bahay ko pa. Okay? May edad na siya at may lakas naman siya, wala naman siyang sakit. Okay? I would tell that person, you are still to feed them. Okay? Pakainin mo pa rin naman. Show mercy and grace, encourage, encouragement, support them to look for a job. Encourage them. But he, if he or she does not look for a job and stays at home and doing nothing at all, is healthy and strong and able, there will come a time that you are to tell him or that your child, like what Paul said in verse 10, if anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. Hindi mo siya papakainin. Ika-cut off mo yun. You will not even allow him to or her to be lazy even at home doing nothing. And I, and I have talked to a lot of parents na tama, alam mo yun, nandun sila sa bahay, walang trabaho yung anak, and then yung nanay, tatay pa rin ang nag-work sa bahay. Pagkatapos kumain ng anak, yung kanyang plato, yung kanyang pinagkanan, ang magulang pa rin ang maghuhugas. I've seen many parents who slack off when it comes to children not training them at home to be diligent. Kaya sila tamad na maghanap ng trabaho kasi tamad na sila nung una pa and they were not trained. Sabi ko nga doon sa, uh, sa kausap ko before, anak, parang nasabi mo to, anak, pati ba yung plato mo ako maguhugas? O kaya doon sa asawa niya na tamang, ako pa ba magluluto ng almusal mo? Ako ba magpa-flush ng toilet mo? Actually, nakagulat in some ways, no? But I have heard people saying na ako pa ang naglalaba para sa kanya. Wala na siyang ginawa maghapon. Talagang idle siya, lazy siya, tapos siya pa ang maglalaba. Kung sino na yung trabaho siya pa ang naglalaba, siya pa na mamalengke, siya na nga nag-provide siya pa rin ng lahat. Kaya nga, I told the wife, you have to cut off. Kaya nga lang, hindi nila nakikita yung panawagan dito sa Second Thessalonians. So after giving them instructions on what to do with a brother who is walking in idleness, so this is what we are to do, we are to keep away, we have to be firm dun sa word ni God. Hindi ito parang not showing heart to other person, but we are showing them that we are, we are standing firm with the Word of God. Kailangan kunsun din ang salita ng Panginoon because if I'm not going to apply the Word of God doon sa taong ito, then I will be the one who will be sinning against God. So keep away. Then Paul will show them his example in verses 7 to 9, the example of Paul. It says, therefore, you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us because we were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but with toil and labor, we worked night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have that right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. At the start of verse 7, we can see that Paul reminds them that they know already what they are to follow, that they are to follow his example. Kasi ginawa niya na ito in the in First Thessalonians. They know what is right. They know what will glorify God. Christians ang kausap dito ni Paul. Eh. Because of the sin issue, it's not new. It goes back to First Thessalonians when Paul was with them. 
Because Paul was with them, Paul then gave them an example on how they are to live their lives. They are then to imitate Paul. The word imitate in Greek, we get the English word mimic. So, gayahin niyo ako. Or in Filipino, in Filipino Standard Version, the word used here is tularan. O sundin ng example na ipinakita ni Paul sa kanyang pamumuhay. Paul will mention this truth again in the last part of verse 9. But to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. In verse 9 also, Paul will remind them of his rights to receive support from the churches that he has established. It was not because we do not have the right. Sinabi niya ito. The believers actually in Philippi was supporting Paul while he was in Thessalonica. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 16, even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. So may right si Paul, nakaka-receive siya ng support and help for his ministry from other churches. What Paul is saying here in verse 9 is that I may be receiving support financially from other ch- churches, for that is my right as a servant of the Lord who proclaims the gospel. We are now working diligently for us to be an example for you to imitate. That's why verse 9 says, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. So what are they to imitate? What example did Paul show them to follow? First, Paul was not idle or lazy. Verse 7b, because we were not idle when we were with you. Paul and his company did not deviate or resist the will of God. Did they, uh, they did not live an unruly life. Paul and his friends lived a disciplined life for they were diligent. They worked hard in order to earn and to provide for themselves. Okay, kasama dito ni Paul yung kanyang mga kasamahan na namuhay ng kasipagan. Second, Paul did not live dependent on others. In verse 8a and first part, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. So ibig sabihin, pinabayaran ito ni Paul. In context, Paul and his company at that time lived in Jason's house. Ito po yung context. So they were living in Jason's house. They, they, they lived there paying for their food. They did not rely on Jason's provision. Jason may be providing for Paul's needs at that time, but Paul was paying Jason enough for their food. Other commentators also said that Paul may also be paying for his stay at Jason's house. So nagbibigay siya ng pambayad para sa kanyang pagkain, not only that, maybe even yung kanyang lodging. Paul did this to be an example and for them to imitate him. Paul showed and reminded them that we did not take advantage of others, but we sustained all our needs. Thirdly, Paul lived diligently, but we toil but with toil and labor, we work night and day. Work night and day. They lived with Jason, but Paul and his company worked diligently. Paul worked as a tent maker. Yun po yung kanyang skill. This is the skill that he has at that time. Kaya nga sabi sa Acts 18 verse 3, And because he was the same of that same trade, he stayed with them and worked with them, for they were tent makers by trade. Maari pong siyang nagte-tent make at that time. So they work night and day, and why do they have to work? Verse 8, that they might not be a burden to any of you. And this, is, this truth is laid out in Scripture. In 1 Thessalonians 2.9, sabi po dito, And for you, remember brothers, our labor and toil, we work night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you, while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. So Paul was working night and day. He was diligent. Paul even ministered the gospel to them while he was ministering. Even in Acts chapter 20, verse 34, you yourselves know that these hands, these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. His work was not only for himself, but also for Paul's companion. So hindi siya makasirali. Kumaga, I'm working and I'm working also for the needs of others. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 12, And we labor, working with our own hands. They were working. Actually, ang ganda ng example ni Paul. Eh. With his example right now, I do hope that this will encourage you to work harder. And he was working not for himself, but also for others. This is a great reminder for us. 
Paul's diligence, how Paul worked and became a good example for them and for us in our time. And I pray that we also follow his example. Work hard and be a good example for others to follow. Work hard, not for yourself, but also for others. Work hard so that you will not depend on others because this is God's will. Work hard uh, because uh, work, but the priority is still the gospel and for the glory of our God. Ito yung direction ni Paul when he was working. Do you work like Paul? For those who are working, I do hope you will have a better understanding of work in Paul's example. In verse 10, the warning. It reads, Therefore, even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. So after giving the example, nagbigay na siya ngayon ng parang medyo mabigat na warning para sa kanila. Paul would again remind them and give them a command. The command, if anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. In Filipino Standard Version, noon pa mang kasama ninyo kami, ganito na ang inutos namin sa inyo. Huwag ninyong pakainin ang sino mang ayaw magtrabaho. Malinaw po, di ba? Siguro dapat maintindihan po natin ng malinaw po yun. Hindi po dapat tayo magbigay ng parang, ay, hindi, baka pwede pa rin naman. Okay? Siyempre, may mga bagay na kailangan na exempt natin. Kung yung tao ay may sakit, unable to work, di ba? bedridden siya, unable to provide for, for himself. Siyempre, we are to feed and help that person. Pero if the person is healthy, may kakayanan na mag-work, mag-work ka. Ba't hindi ka mag-work? Okay? Paul's reminder is simple, not that they have received this command, they are then to take it seriously and apply it in their lives. They are to apply it in their church. They, must, uh, they now must work, and if not, they will not eat. Paul is telling them the seriousness of being lazy or idle. Hindi simpleng kasalanan ang laziness. Hindi simpleng kasalanan ang pagiging tamad. Minsan kasi ito yung nagiging thinking natin. Eh. Okay? That is sin. You will not eat until you work. I was reminded before, after my course, my two-year course in Airlink, actually graduate po ako ng aircraft mechanic before. So, I was not able to find a job sa airlines because doon ko lang nalaman pagka-graduate ko nung 18 years old kasi two-year course ito. I can only have my license at the age of 21. So, three years ako dapat mag-work without pay. So, parang nagkaroon ako ng isip at that time, parang disadvantage because I live in Caloocan and the work is in the airport. Napakalayo yun. So, pamasahe and everything, pagkain ko and everything like that. So, parang disadvantage for me. At hindi ko alam yun at that time. So, nasa house na lang muna ako at that time processing kung ano yung kailangan kong gawin for maybe a couple of weeks. Then, my mom told me, sabi ni mama, hindi na pwede na wala kang trabaho. Okay? Wala na ang papa mo, so kahit anong trabaho, maghanap ka. Kahit na ikaw ay maging isang janitor, o tagapaglinis man ng kahit na ano, maging kitchen helper. So, maghanap ka ng any work. So, hindi maganda na nasa bahay ka lamang at walang ginagawa. Actually, ako yung gumagawa lahat. Kasi sila yung nag-work, Ako yung naglilinis ng bahay and kasi we were trained that way. It's not that I'm not doing anything. Ayaw lang ni mama na wala akong work. Kasi for them, valuable and nag-work. So I went out, follow her, followed her advice and tried to look for a job. And, and actually, fresh pa ito sa aking mind. Nung sumakay ako ng jeep, nakasabay ko yung kaklasmate ko nung high school. At nagtanong ako sa kanya, naghanap ako ng work? Kasi sinabihan ako ng mama ko, kakilala niya kasi mama ko. Wala kong ma- uh, saan ba ako pwedeng mag-apply? Sabi niya, pwede kang mag-apply. Nag-work ako ngayon sa Jollibee. So, doon na yung time na yon So, sabi niya, kumuha, gawa ka lang ng uh, biodata pa yata that time. Eh. Biodata, bili ka agad akong biodata, pa-picture ka agad ako. At that moment, actually, nag-apply ako and I was hired after three days. I am sharing this to you because I know that I was not a Christian at that time. Siguro professing because we were attending a Christian church. But my point is, I see the value of work at that time kahit hindi ko pa nakita ito in Scripture. 
I was only 18 years old at that time. Tayo ngayon sa church, we know that work is important. Biblically speaking, you should know that. Unbelievers know that work is important. We Christians should better know. Diba? Dapat mas alam natin na importante ito. But the problem is many would not take this command seriously. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. Many Christians, many Christian parents allow laziness in their homes. And I have heard and seen, heard stories about, alam mo yun, mga anak na hindi marunong magtrabaho. Alam mo kung bakit minsan yung ibang mga anak, hindi, alam mo yun, yung parang hindi sila masipag dahil hindi sila natitrain. Tinatamad sila mag-apply dahil syempre in some way, hindi nila nakita yung importance at hindi nila nakikita ito as they are to be trained at home. I have known families that they would just let their children, even their husbands who, have doesn't, who doesn't have work, live like a bum. Hindi marunong mag, maghugas ng pinggan. So, lahat naman yata ng kabataan dito marunong na maghugas ng pinggan. No? Do you know how to cook? So they, you should learn all, all of those things. Alam niyo kung bakit? When you graduate, it's easier to look for a job because you will be compensated. Ay kapalit eh. Siyempre, gusto mong mag-earn, gusto mong mapakita na ikaw ay naging established din sa, iyong, sa, sa isang trabaho dahil naging graduate ka. Okay? But working at home, ito ay medyo challenging kasi parang walang kapalit. Di ba, tinatamad yung maraming kabataan, ayaw nila, but you are to train them. So when they work, it's not all about money. They work, you teach them, you work at home because this is the authority that was given to us as your parents. Kahit wala itong kapalit, but this will be beneficial for you. Turuan mo sila. Para when they grow older, nakagraduate sila, ang focus nila is not just about compensation, but no, the Lord desires me to work hard for Him. I followed actually Pastor Bob's advice na maganda na magkaroon ng, ng, ng pet si James. Kaya kami may tatlong aso. Actually, lima, lima pa nga eh, nung isang beses dahil nang anak, binigay ko na lang kay Mia yung dalawa. But it was a good training for him. Alam mo yun, he, he will clean the wiwi, the pupu, papaliguan. So meron siyang responsibility na kailangan niyang gawin. At first, parang ang saya niya, and then nakita niya yung labor na nakakapagod to. And then I told him the benefit of learning to do it with joy. And then in time, na-develop na sa kanya yun, pagka inutusan ko siya, James, change the wee-wee pad. Okay, dire-diretso na siya. And then he knows, alam niya na. And then training, how to cook, how to live on his own, beneficial yun para sa akin din, dahil pwede namin siyang iwan sa bahay. Just like right now. Okay, nasa bahay siyang ngayon. So, teach them. So when he, he, when he grows up, when he works, magiging madali sa kanya lalo yung work. Kasi bata pa lamang, trained na siya. Alam niya na kung yun yung gagawin. Actually, that was my generation before. Bawal yun actually sa mga lola at lolo ko na tatamad-tamad ka at wala kang ginagawa sa bahay. That's why we take work seriously. I take work seriously. But there are some people who are still choosy when, they, when it comes to work. Ayaw lang talaga magtrabaho, but they can work. They are graduate, they have skills, but the problem, they still choose not to work. Meron din akong isang case before na ang tagal ng walang work, ang anak niya, so kinausap ko yung parent, ang explanation niya, gust, yeah, hindi niya gusto yung compensation dahil dati daw maganda yung compensation niya, mataas. Laki nung kinikita. So after ilang years, walang trabaho yung kanyang anak. Inalaw niya yung antyan niyang anak to continue to live in their house na walang work. So if you have someone at home not walk, working, and not working, talk to that person, remind him of this truth, correct, rebuke with love, and give a warning. If that person will insist in living in sin, do not feed that person so that he will learn. Huwag mong pakainin. Siyempre, process po ito, no? 
Baka mamaya, anak, wala kang work, wala kang kakain, ha? Eh, hindi pa pwedeng ganun. Siyempre, process to, process, okay? So, verse 11, is not only uh, that they are to work so that they can eat, Paul would, as we now see, uh, the instructions given by Paul, Paul for those who are idle. So, ano instructions niya? Keep away, follow the example of Paul, no work, no eat. Okay, so simple. Mabibigat man ito, pero si Paul ay patuloy pa rin na umaabot sa kanila at may encouragement siya in verse 11 to 13. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now, such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. Now, because Paul was not with them and would only hear reports about them, some of them were corrected okay, and have obeyed and now working, but still there are some who are still idle. They are not working but busybodies. You know what the meaning of busybody is? Okay, meaning they are people who would like to meddle on other people's affair. Busybodies. To meddle in the affairs of someone else. Ano yun? Nakikialam siya sa buhay pa ng ibang tao. Have you heard people who doesn't have work, who is lazy and would still give comments on other people's lives? Sa pa yung minsan magbibigay pa ng payo. Okay? Kakaiba, di ba? At actually, maraming tamad na ganyan. Wala, wala na silang ginagawa na mabuti at hindi na nakakatulong. Ang alam pa nila, makilam pa sa buhay ng iba. They would meddle in the lives of other people. Magkukomment pa sila sa kapwa nila, makikialam pa sa problema ng iba at magbibigay pa yan ng payo. And I have heard people like that. Wow, ang galing mo. Eh, nga, may problem ko pa nga at not working. And then busy body ka pa. So this person has no work lazy, and then would meddle with other people. What is Paul's command? In verse 12, Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and earn their own living. Paul would again give his command in the Lord Jesus. If you know Christ, follow Him. Kasi ang kausap niya dito, mga Christians. Find a job and work quietly. Do not meddle with other people. Hayaan mo sila. Mind your own business. Focus on what you your own focus on your own self and earn a living huwag mo munang isipin ng iba work quietly work hard at ayusin mo ang iyong pamumuhay but for those who are working and are diligent paul also has an encouragement for them in verse 13 as for you brothers do not grow weary in doing good continue to do good be diligent work hard okay so in recap what are we to do with an unruly and idle person Keep away, they are to be disciplined, at church na po ang bahala doon. Tell them to follow the example of Paul. If you do not work, you do not eat. If you know Christ, work quietly for your own good. As we can see, Paul's instruction or command is simple. We are to correct and rebuke the unruly and idle. We are to reach out to them and tell them that what they are doing is sin and does not glorify God. What if... What if they will still not follow the word of God? In verses 14 to 15, it says there, If anyone does not obey what we say in this letter, take note of that person and have nothing to do with him, that he may be ashamed. Do not regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. If that person will still not obey, Paul said, take note of that person. Diba? Ilista mo. Lista ka. Di ba nung high school kayo, may ganun, lilista ng mga noisy. Nilalagay sa blackboard. Di ba? Nakakahiya, di ba? Yung pangalan mo nandoon. Have nothing to do with him that he may be ashamed. Take special note. And that, that this is a serious case and for the whole congregation not to associate with him. What does it mean? John MacArthur actually explained this in his commentary. And I quote, sabi po ni John MacArthur, the strong double compound verb associate with literally means to mix up together with. Okay? Meaning the church individually and collectively was to withdraw fellowship from such persons and avoid them. They were probably to be denied the privilege of taking communion, as I have shared earlier, surely they were not to be allowed to participate in the love feast, 
since feeding them a meal would condone and perpetuate their indolent behavior, the pressure of isolation was to be brought to bear on them to produce repentance. Para magrepent sila. Kasi ang target natin, especially in counseling, is for that person to realize his sin and for that person to repent of it. As long as na hindi niya nare-realize na kasalanan yun, syempre wala itong magiging repentance. Siguro one way for that person to realize that it is sinful, kanyang ginagawa, is for him to be ashamed, to be taken note of. This is what we did before, but in a smaller scale, kasi wala pang membership at that time sa BSL. Actually, yung mga nakakaalam, especially yung family and relatives, who knows the case was involved. We denied him of everything. Hindi siya sinasama sa mga birthday ng kapatid niya. To call his attention. We were serious about this in applying this truth. So, handaan, may gathering, we do not invite him. Maririnig na lang niya. Yung sarap ng kainan namin. He's not invited at all. To feel shame. Not to put down. We're not putting him down. But to encourage that person to see his sin. Kaya nga sabi ni Paul in verse 15, Do not regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. Be reminded, the way to treat the person, syempre hindi po siya parang kaaway natin. Bilang kapatid natin. Some may think that it is harsh, Parang ang sama-sama naman, Brother Jay, ng ginawa mo doon sa taong yun. Hindi pwede siya na makibahagi sa communion, sa fellowship, or gathering. But this is God's word. Sino yung susundin ko? Diba? This is God's command. Then I am to follow it. What the person is doing is sin. If it is sin, it is against God. So we are to do what God has commanded and instructed. In truth, this is showing love for the person sinning because we are reaching out for him to stop sinning and to be right with God. So in summary, what is Paul's instruction for idle people? To keep away from them. They are to be disciplined. Tell them to follow the example of Paul. If you do not work, you do not eat. If you know Christ Jesus, work quietly for your own good. If persistent, take note and withdraw fellowship with the person and warn him as a brother. The person whom I was sharing to you, until now, when I see him, I would still warn and remind him of his sin. So from time to time, nagkikita pa rin kami. The last time na nagkita kami is sa isang funeral service na nagkondak ako. Nagkataon lang at that time, kasi nagpa-booster shot ako noon, nag-chill ako. So hindi ko siya makausap talaga. Kahit gusto ko siyang makausap that evening, kasi nandun siya eh. So I told him that night, uh, na sabi ko, babalik ka ba tomorrow? Um, kasi kakilala niya eh, and close itong taong ito doon sa namatay. So I'm expecting him to come back. Eh, ako yung mag-funeral service for three, three, for three nights. Okay? So at that time, sabi niya, oo, babalik naman ako. Kaya gusto ko sana, sana mag-usap ulit tayo. Ah, actually, ako naman, when I talk to that person, hindi naman ako yung parang, ano yung parang matigas sa kanya, ay, nakikipagkwentuhan pa rin ako, oh, nangangamusta ako sa kanya, kung ano yung buhay niya, pero I have to remind him of his sin. Kasi it is a disadvantage for him and for his family. So after that, actually nabalitaan ko nila, kinabukasan, na magadaw yung paa niya dahil naglakad lang daw siya papunta doon sa funeral place. Kaya hindi daw siya makaka-attend. So, meron pa rin siyang alibi. Ayaw niyang ma-remind siya of the sin na kanyang ginagawa at gusto niya pa rin manatili doon sa kanyang kasalanan. Actually, nakakaawa, di ba? Nakakalungkot. And I t- until now, we are praying for him. I am praying for him na sana makita niya yung kasalanan na ito. That there are people who would continue to sin and disregard God's command. And I hope you are not one of them. Huwag niyong i-disregard yung command dito ng ating Panginoon. If you are idle or lazy, turn away from that sin and follow God's command. In ending, let me share to you yung application lamang po natin and the importance of work. And there are two things that we need to remember as I learned this from James Hamilton's book, Work and Our Labor in the Lord. There are two things na kanyang tinuro doon. Work is an expression of love for God. And second, work is an expression of love for our neighbor. Actually, simpleng-simple lamang po ito. 
So number one, work is an expression of love for God. There are three important reminders. We please God when we work. We please God when we work. We know that it is sin to be idle. It must also be clear that we please God when we work. Simply, simply lamang po ito. In Genesis, the Lord commanded Adam be reminded that work is not a, a result of sin, but work became hard okay, for us to do uh, because of sin. Ang work nandoon na eh. Before pa, nag-sin. Naging mabigat lang yung trabaho dahil sa kasalanan. Okay? Genesis 1.28 reads, And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds and ha- of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. They are to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. There is work to be done. So may trabaho na before, sin pa dumati- before pa dumating ang sin. So gusto ng Panginoon, gawin ito ni Adam and Eve ng tama, to be diligent in their calling. James Hamilton in his book, okay, Work and Our Labor in the Lord, said, and I quote, God built a cosmic temple when He called creation into being. In that temple, He placed His own image and likeness. He then blessed His image and likeness and charged them with a responsibility. Their job was to make the world that God made good, even better for both plant and animal life. Being in God's image and likeness, mankind was to cultivate the world of vegetation and living creatures in ways reflecting God's own character and creativity. Work is therefore built into the created order right from the start. God gave man stewardship of the land and all of life on it. All tasks man undertakes in God's world can be seen in relationship to the original commission. So kapag tayo ay nagkatrabaho, okay, na inilaan na trabaho ng Diyos para sa atin, ito ay pleasing sa Kanyang harapan. Second, we glorify His name. Not only that we please God, but we glorify Him. We glorify God when we work because this is submitting ourselves to His will. Obedience glorifies the Lord. So when you work out of obedience and submission and out of uh, thankfulness, dahil faithful ang ating Panginoon, binibigyan tayo ng strength to work, then it glorifies Him. Thirdly, we magnify the name of Christ. If we love God, we will do our work in the name of Christ. Because we are now one with Christ, we can then proclaim Him even more in the area of work. This is an opportunity for us to live the character of, life, uh, the character of Christ. In our work, we can show them our testimony as Christians and bring hope in their lives. Are you doing that when you work? Or you're just working, pero si Christ hindi nakikita sa inyo. Or you're just working and then you're not sharing the gospel to your office mates. We are put in that position not just for you to earn, but for us to reveal the glories of God, the goodness of God, the mercies of God. Colossians 3, 23 to 24, Paul says, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward, you are serving the Lord Christ. We are serving Christ. So when you do right, at ginagawa mo ito para sa Panginoon, magiging mali ba ito sa boss mo? Kung tama naman na ginagawa mo ang lahat. So tayo magtrabaho ng mabuti, hindi para sa pera, hindi dahil ito para sa inyong boss, Kundi ang tamang biblical perspective ay dahil tayo ay naglilingkod sa ating Panginoon. At kung ito ang ating tuon, ating naitataas ang kanyang pangalan. Second, work is an expression of love for our neighbor. So yung una, expression of our love for God and next to our neighbor. First, hard work benefits others. So if you're working hard, it should benefit others. Not only your family. Dapat din po ang church o kung sino man ang inyong kalapit sa inyong buhay. Okay? In 1 Corinthians 9, at hindi po natin ito babasahin, pero the, the, the point of the passage is a reminder of Paul that he, he himself, uh, uh, he, actually he did not use his rights, but work okay, for him to have a financial support for himself. So nagtrabaho siya para sa kanyang sarili, para mag-benefit yung iba kasi hindi siya magiging burden para sa ibang mga kapatiran. Yung kanyang pag-work hard, nag-benefit dahil nakatulong din siya sa pangangailangan ng iba. So not only that, 
Our work, hard work benefits others. Okay? We work hard. Okay? Work is an expression of love for our neighbor for ministry support. You are to work not only for yourself nor your, for your family. Work is also a means to help the ministry in the church. Kayo nagtatrabaho, hindi lamang para sa inyong sarili. And you are to think about the church. Because we are brothers and sisters here in the church. This opens an opportunity for you to be part of the work of the, of the church. As we support the needs of the workers of the Lord. Nakakatulong po tayo sa kanila. So kapag may trabaho kayo, ito'y pagkakataon na ibinibigay ng Diyos sa inyo na kayo ay makatulong sa kanyang gawain. For example, okay, helping the pastors. Dahil we live by love offering. Not only that, by supporting other ministries or missionaries na ating binibigyan ng tulong sa church. We, we, we support yung sa Pakistan, we support the people in Palawan, we support other minis, uh, missionaries na nagiging malaking tulong ito para sa kanila. At ito ay blessing para sa kanilang paglilingkod sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Is it good na di ba, maganda na maging part kayo ng ministry that you are helping out? Not only that, to share to those who are in need. Ephesians 4.28, Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. So if you are working, okay, if you are earning, you will be useful for the work of God. Para dun sa mga taong nangangailangan. At maraming passages po in scripture kung saan tayo po ay tinatawag to, to help others. Romans 12.13 Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Hebrews 13.10 Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Proverbs 19.17 Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and He will repay him for his deed. Proverbs 3.17 Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is your power to do it. Kung ikaw ay tunay na may pananampalataya kay Jesus, ikaw ay mamamuhay ayon din sa inyong pananampalataya at maisasalamin ito sa inyong buhay, yung kabutihan din ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Sometimes they, they would think, eh, Brother Jay, paano yung iba na talagang uh, sabi mo, not to be dependent on others. But be reminded, there will be people in the church na talagang yung lot nila is talagang kailangan nila palagi ng tulong natin. Siyempre, we are helping them in some way and because I have those kind of people and I have been with those kind of people, especially in Albay, dahil may hirap yung mga tao doon, talagang kailangan nila ng help. Until now, actually, na kailangan sila ng help. So if we earn, we are to think about other people, especially to those who are needy. And also, sabi nga, to have a good testimony. First Thessalonians 4.12, so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. Hindi lamang tayo nakatulong sa ating mga kapatiran, kundi ito'y nagpapakita ng magandang testimonya sa lahat. So in summary, in all of this, for us to see the importance of work, we learn that work is an expression of love for God. It pleases God, it glorifies God, it magnifies the name of Christ. Work is an expression of love for our neighbor. Hard work benefits others for ministry support to share to those who are in need to have a good testimony. Ibig sabihin, if you are idle, if you are lazy, if you are not following the word of, the, the word of God, you do not please God, you do not glorify His name, you do not magnify the name of Christ, you do not benefit others, you do not help those who are in need, you do not have a good testimony, and you are a burden to others. Nakita niyo yung kabaliktaran? So have a proper biblical perspective about work. If you want to glorify God, work hard. But be reminded, okay, and I have seen a lot of people, they would work hard, pero nawawala yung oras sa church. Hindi din naman tama po yun. Okay? Work hard, but work harder for the church. Kaya po yun eh. And a lot of people would deny that. A lot, papagod sila. Some people I have, uh, I have experienced with, talk to, tamang simula nung nagka-work sila, hindi na sila nagpapakita sa church, nor even helping out. Pero kanino ba galing yung work natin? 
Is it because we are, alam mo yun, magaling tayo? Di ba? The work is a blessing from the Lord. We just give it back to God. And by giving back to the church, by helping the church, by serving the church, na priority pa rin natin ay ang ating church, ang ating mga kapatiran, work is just there. Huwag niyong compromise yung church sa work ninyo. It is good to work. Pero kapag nakocompromise naman yung relationship niyo with God, with your growth, kung hindi na kayo nakaka ng cell, hindi na kayo nakakapag-serve, then you are to check on it. I-check ninyo yung inyong heart. Lord, baka mali din yung aking understanding about work. Ayoko kasi na parang lalabas kayo yung dito, I'll work hard. And then next Sunday, wala na masyadong a-attend. Sabi ni Pastor Jay, mag-work ako dapat. Hindi na attend ng cell. Hindi po dapat ganun. The more you should be here in church as a sign of your thankfulness and gratefulness sa ating Panginoon na Lord, maraming salamat for Monday to Friday you have given me the strength to work. But I'm also here sa church palagi because I worship you and I thank you because you are a faithful and good father. So do not be idle. And I do hope and I encourage you not to be idle, but work hard for the glory of God. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the time that you have given us to study your word and to be reminded of the sin of idleness, O God. This is sin. This is not a simple sin. So I pray, Lord God, that everyone may be able to understand it as simple as possible. And on how we are, Lord God, to direct people who are sinning this way, showing them love, showing them mercy, O God, and understanding. Thank you for everyone who is here. Continue to bless us, Lord God, and help us, Lord God, not just to understand your word, but that we may be able to apply it, Lord God, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Brother Jay. We have one first-timer today. His name is Jason Frisco. So we'd like you, Jason, if you're still here, can you please stand up to be acknowledged? Pakitayo lamang po. Salamat, Jason, sa iyong pagdalo. We have four announcements also for today. Uh, and the first of all is, uh, and I hope you got the word about this, basic Christian doctrine class, uh, no classes today. Okay, so wala pong classes for the basic Christian Doctrine class. Second announcement is in regard to our midweek series, Heavenly Living for Our Earthly Good. This is the theme for the month of July. And once again, we are inviting our brethren to join us for the midweek prayer service. This is via Zoom, 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. And if you have prayer requests, because that is a prayer service, we encourage you to write them down and drop them in the prayer boxes right at the entrance. Or you can send an SMS to 0917-889-0521. Or you may even email them at hrcc.prayforme at gmail.com. The Husbands and Wives Fellowship would also like to announce Put on Love Part 2. That will be on July 30. That's a Saturday uh, from 2.30 to 5 p.m. So I will be with you for that uh, ministry. Put on love part two. The three-on-three -three basketball challenge is also uh, underway. And this is a time for fellowship and basketball games. Open to 14 years old and up. And also for the women. Okay, so meron pong women's basketball who, uh, these are those for those who are who will regularly who regularly attend our Sunday service. So the final divisions to be determined will be determined later. Registration fee is 250 pesos per head. Last day of registration is today. Okay, so don't forget if you want to play uh, three on three basketball with the brethren, uh, today is the last day. Uh, tinatanong nila ako and they continue to encourage me to play basketball sabi ko, sige out of, because you want me to play I will play pero sa women's division ako <laughs> so uh, para ano, <laughs> now my playing days are over I think uh, three on three basketball challenge 
Uh, the dates, by the way, are August 29, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's a Monday. That's a weekday because it's a holiday. Okay, so it's a holiday. And, and then the venue for that day will be at Gameville Home Court sa may Kainta. Uh, Gameville Home Court Kainta. Um, we are also encouraging, of course, those who will not play to just come around, be, have fellowship with us. Uh, just enjoy the company of the brethren. And then on September 4, that's a Sunday, lilipat po yung venue for the, I think this is for the finals and those who, who did well, so first day, it will be uh, at the SGS gym over at Araneta Avenue. And we've had our games there before. Okay, so uh, please take note of those dates, August 29. Over at Green uh, Gameville Home Court Kainta, and then September 4 from 3 p.m. I'm um, sorry, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, at the SGS Gym Araneta Avenue. So that's all the announcements we have today. Uh, ready? Shall we all rise? At uh, batiin po natin yung isa tisa. Batiin natin yung first timers. Ano, yan. Wala tayong koino ninyo kanina, so. My life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope. I will praise you with all of my strength, with all of my life, with all of my strength, all of my hope is in you. My life is in you, Lord, my strength. As we go in our separate ways, we pray, O oh Lord, that we live our life according to you, will, as we belong in you. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs> 